It seems that you've been fighting for a long time, praying, hoping, believing, and trusting, but you haven't seen anything, nothing. No movement of God, no prayer answered, no way around the obstacle, and no heart change. And therefore, you've gotten really discouraged and you've thought to yourself, maybe I should just give in, throw in the towel, because that would be so much easier than continuing this fight. Trust me, I've been there even recently. So today, I want to bring before you six biblical heroes of the faith, because I really do think that their stories will encourage you. Stick with me. You don't want to miss it. In his song, Hymn of Heaven, Phil Wickham sings, There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more, standing face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. And on that day, we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith. With one voice, a thousand generations sing, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Imagine that standing next to some of the heroes of the faith. Why would we consider them heroes of the faith? Well, I think it's because they left us a huge and important legacy. They were strong in perseverance, firm in resolve, and steady in determination. They simply did not give up, even when the pressures were insurmountable. So today, let's take a look at some of these heroes of faith and see what we can learn from them. The first hero of faith is Noah. You know, everything changed for Noah on the day that he got the call to build an ark. What? An ark? Are you telling me, God, that you're going to bring rain on this earth so hard that it's going to flood the earth? Imagine how hard it was for him in his obedience. No one believed him. No one took him serious. They tried, often visiting him. Now, tell me again, Noah, what you think God said to you. Do you not realize how absurd all of this is? And you know, this went on for 120 years. His family may have been the laughing stock of the community. Imagine how hard life was for Noah, but he did not give up. He didn't give up. Thankfully, we have the end of the story and what was rewarded him. We read in Hebrews 11:7, it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. I'm sure that in the end, Noah was so thankful that he had not given up. And then we have Joshua. For 40 years, Joshua was a student under Moses. And I'm sure that you realize that being a student is far easier than being a leader. But then the day came when God raised up Joshua and called Joshua to lead his people into the promised land. This would not be an easy task. The Israelites often looked into the faces of giants and great warriors, and the people of Canaan would not go down without a fight. No doubt it was grueling to say the least, and it took a long time to conquer the land of Canaan. In fact, scholars say that it took most of Joshua's adult life to conquer just portions of the promised land. But Joshua did not back down. And because of Joshua's resolve to keep going forward, his story is recorded for us. He is one of the greatest warriors of all time. And as we are faced with insurmountable battles as well, Joshua teaches us how to be strong warriors by remaining faithful, resilient, and obedient to God. We read in Joshua 24, 21, the people of Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua. I can't wait to sit down one day with Joshua and hear more about his story. If you want to know more about Joshua, then make sure to pick up our Bible study, Joshua, Heaven's Mighty Warrior. 
It is an incredible Bible study that reveals the tactics that Joshua used in his battle against the Canaanites and tactics that we can use in our own spiritual battle as well. And then we have Isaiah. You know, it was a long and arduous road to be a prophet of God. They came forth at a time when the people of God were living in rebellion and they were hostile towards God's anointed ones. When God called Isaiah to preach repentance, he told him that no one would listen, no one, and that he would be preaching to deaf ears. Imagine that. Rather than embracing his message with heart emojis, they threw stones. And this went on throughout his whole ministry. But Isaiah did not relinquish his voice. His resolve was strong. And God gave Isaiah many prophecies concerning the coming Messiah. Prophecies like in Isaiah 9, 6. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And in Isaiah 53, 5, he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. In fact, the whole 53rd chapter of Isaiah is about the suffering and death of Jesus. What an incredible role model Isaiah becomes to us. And then we have Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm clumping all four of these into one. But many Jewish people were taken captive by the Babylonians. But four of those people stand out in the book of Daniel. It was a difficult time for the people of Israel. They were taken from their homeland, forced to live in a foreign land under ungodly leadership, and forced to bow to idols. But not one of them caved to the pressures. And for that, they paid a hefty fine. Daniel in the lion's den and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Yet they remained faithful and loyal to God even when their lives were threatened. God used Daniel for his grand purposes and to give us a vision into the future. In fact, Daniel's dreams seem to coincide with John's vision in the book of Revelation. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego give us a portrait of how God honors those who are valiant, remain valiant when opposition comes. And then we have the Apostle Paul. Paul may have been the greatest evangelist to walk on the face of this earth, but his ministry and his journey was very difficult. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28, he gives us specific details of his struggles and his sufferings. The Apostle Paul was opposed at every juncture. He came against religious leaders who challenged his message, jealous people who sought to discredit him, and hateful people who wanted him dead. His name remained at the top of the 10 most wanted list for all of his ministry. Yet he never quit. He never quit. And I'm pretty sure that you're glad that he didn't. God used him to write over half the New Testament and to guide the church with solid doctrine into future centuries. Paul was a strong leader who never wavered in his faith. He stayed on mission with Jesus through every mountain and every valley. There's not a better example other than Jesus than the Apostle Paul for us to follow. Then we have the Apostle John. John was chosen to be one of Jesus' disciples when he was a young man, and he walked with Jesus for three years and then was instrumental in launching the early church. But as time moved forward, all of his fellow apostles had died, leaving him alone. John was old and feeble when he was banished to the island of Patmos for preaching the gospel. People often retire from ministry when they get older, not John. He was still teaching and preaching well into his 90s. But John never fizzled out. And it's a good thing that John continued to move forward and press forward because God gave him a powerful vision, the book of Revelation, while he was on the island of Patmos. This revelation has been an integral part of Christian doctrine since the Bible was formatted. And there's not a better time than right now to study this timely word from God. 
And for your information, if you would like to study Revelation to really understand it, then make sure to pick up our Bible study, Revelation, a message for the church. I must tell you that my heart has been stirred thinking of these faith heroes. Recently, I've experienced some health woes and some ministry detours. And I've also been praying for just a spark in some of my loved ones' lives. I've questioned, wondered, and pondered God's plan more lately than ever before. But I will tell you this, that I'm gonna let these stories give me strength in my resolve to keep going forward and to not give up. I hope you'll do the same.